We're going to talk about China. I want to bring out our Chinese partner, Gabriel Hai, who, is, um, who runs our Chinese joint venture, Lend It and China. Lend It has made a lot of efforts in China over the years. We have, um, we have a fantastic conference planned in July in Shanghai. So please join me in welcoming Gabriel Hai. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Um, it's my honor and the privilege to uh, stand here today. My name is Gabriel, the CEO of Landed China, um, which is called Langdi in Chinese pronunciation. Um, actually, the correct pronunciation should be Langdi, but I, I bet it's a little bit too difficult for uh, English speakers. Uh, so Landed has a vision of uh, connecting global fintech community in which we see two dominating markets today, China and the US. And just for your information that within landed team, we have a lot of discussions about the collaborations between China and the US, and we hold very different opinions about whether Chinese FinTech market is three times, five times, or 10 times larger than the US. So I just want to give you guys a few numbers to bear in mind that there are about um, 320 million U.S. citizens, and on average, each U.S. citizen will have you know, more than two credit cards, between 2.5 to 3. Uh, on China, on the other hand, we have a population of 1.4 billion people, and the average number of credit cards per capita is about 0 0.3. Our country has a poor credit re reporting infrastructure. We have no um, credit bureaus, we have no FICO score, but at the same time, we have almost 700 million active smartphone users. So just imagine you know, this enormous China opportunity to the whole FinTech world, platforms, professional services, tech providers, etc. So this is why you know, we invite you, all of you, to China. Landed held an amazing Landed China conference last July in Shanghai with more than 1,300 FinTech leaders. And we will make it bigger, fancier, and more productive for Western world um, in the coming July this year. But of course, to do business or raise money in China could be difficult. Different languages, different political systems, and different cultures. So you will need friends, strong friends, to support you. And this is why I'm here, uh, I'm here by introducing you one of the most successful entrepreneur and investor in China, Ms. Lu Guo, from um, Hanfo Holdings. So Ms. Guo is among the first generation of financial leaders when China began to build up its capital market 15 years ago. And under her leadership, Hanfo has become one of the top-rated uh, asset management companies in China and it also invests heavily in the global fintech market. So uh, let's welcome Ms. Guo to give us a presentation with the topic, Irreversible Globalization, Fintech in China and the US move rapidly towards integration. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gabriel. Uh, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to be here in New York City to attend the Landed Conference. The United States is regarded as the world's most development country in fintech with many excellent companies. My colleagues and I have been paying close attention to its development in the U.S. market. We attended yesterday's sessions and learned from the speakers who enlightened us on the subjects such as Amazon's operations and applications on the big data. We always believe that the power of technology would accelerate globalization and equalize the world. In China, the de development of fintech has disrupted the traditional financial market for the first time the once underserved population is now enjoying the financial services conveniently at a lower cost. China historically suffered from uneven regional development. However, through the efforts from the companies like Ludacom and Financial and Noyan Technology, millions of underserved families have been provided the same level of financial services as the others. 
In the FinTech 100 list published by KPMG in 2016, eight of the top 50 are Chinese companies. China has become an important force in global FinTech. Due to the disparities in environment, maturity, and the regulation of the financial market, China and the US took different pathways to growth in FinTech with their own characteristics and strengths. The financial market in the US were well established, highly sophisticated with advanced segmentation. Hence, American FinTech companies focus more on driving financial efficiency through technology. China's FinTech, however, emerged from a less matured market aimed to reinvent the financial service system. These different models, in our opinion, may just coexist temporarily. In the future, with the Chinese financial market becoming more open and sophisticated, Chinese and American fintech companies will converge in various areas and come up with new models, new standards, and new services. We're able to see the trends through things happening around us every day. When a Chinese visitor comes to the US, bringing a Visa or MasterCard is very necessary, as credit card is still the most popular payment method. However, in China, people are used to going out and shopping only with smartphones loaded, even in Thailand and other Southeast Asian countries as well. Credit card, a popular financial payment method in Western countries, is being overtaken by other methods in China. Around the world, people's pursuit of good quality of life is the same. So in the future, payment service providers and other financial institutions in both China and the US would have to embrace the challenge and the opportunity to collaborate and integrate. Over the past years, several American fintech companies have expanded their business to China. We believe it is irreversible that globalization would stimulate cooperation between Chinese and American fintech companies. In the future landed conferences, we will see more fintech players become established names in China, the US, and other countries around the world. So what are the opportunities for future collaboration and the development? Hanford believes that a core of fintech is finance. Taking China, for example, the primary obstacle of financial development is not a capital shortage rather the incapability of identifying the good assets and the innovation of technology. We studied the success and the failure of many Chinese fintech companies and found that those are two key winning factors. For overseas fintech companies who plan to enter China market, our suggestions are find good Chinese partners with deep understanding of regulatory policies good government relations, sound experience in financial market operations, sophisticated management of financial risks, global vision, great ambition, and effective execution. Those are also Hanford's focuses. Going forward, Hanford is hoping to collaborate more with folks sitting in front of me in the area of FinTech and others. Hanford set up its fintech division, Noyan Technology, to drive the development of consumer finance, big data, risk management, etc. In addition to dedication and effort from ourselves, we would like further collaborations and interaction with our partners around the world. Besides fintech, Hanford is also a leading asset management company in China. Our services cover capital management, wealth management, credit rating reporting. Through the PPP, public-private partnership model, Hanford has participated in building several industry parks and other large projects. We are also pursuing high-quality business startup projects around the world. Hanford pay quite attention to some unique asset management opportunities in China domestic market. 
For example, chances in real estate with urbanization booming, demand on health care improvement by the people and the consumption upgrade. Norian Capital, a subsidiary of Hanford, provides direct wealth management to Chinese ever-growing mid-class and high net worth population through the mobile APPs and the brick and mortar branches. In addition, have also stepped into credit rating and the service. Shanghai Far East Rating, another Hanford subsidiary, has acquired every license and the qualification to run credit rating services in China. We believe that intensive efforts on those sectors would benefit the development of fintech. For instance, we are investing some companies that we served with loans and credits by us as we understand their business well and have a better approach to control the risk. The growth of China's fintech over the past year was solid with in-depth exploration and innovations, which involved the financial ecosystem and offered much better customer experience in financial services. At the same time, China's regulatory environment is proving China's fintech is all set to embark in full speed. PwC's latest research report predicted that by 2050, on a purchasing power parity basis, China's economy would become the world's largest one. In this economic growth cycle, we would be able to see substantial emerging opportunities in fintech. Hanford looks forward to joining hands with fintech company in the U.S. and around the world to create a better future. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much.